Determine the components of the reaction at A and B if the 100 pound load is applied at shown and B if the 100 pound load is moved along its line of action and is applied at point F. So the first step in solving this problem is making a free body diagram. Secondly, we're going to analyze the entire structure. Then we're going to disassemble the frame, find the two force member, and then solve for all of the unknowns that we don't have yet. All right, so let's make our free body diagram. We already know that there's going to be a 100 pound force in the downward direction. We also know that the joints at A and B are pins, so they would have a reaction force both in the x direction and the y direction. And that's everything that's going to be in our free body diagram for the entire structure as a whole. So what we're going to do now, not just in this frame problem, but in any frame problem that you do, is we're going to analyze the entire structure as a whole using our three most important equations. The sum of forces in x is going to be equal to zero, sum of forces of y is going to be equal to zero, and if we took a moment about any point on our frame, it's going to be equal to zero, and this is because the frame is in equilibrium, so it's not moving or it's not going anywhere. It's a rigid structure. Starting out with our sum of forces in x, we have ax plus bx equals zero. Our sum of forces in y is ay plus by minus the 100 pound force is equal to zero. So if we take these two equations and we rearrange them. Now the next thing we need to do is pick a point and take a moment about it because right now all we have are unknowns and we need to solve for some of these unknowns. So you can take a moment about a or b, it's up to you, but those would definitely be the two most important points that you could take a moment as, as you always want to take a moment at a point where you have the most unknowns. So for this example, I'm going to take a moment about A. So if we look at the forces that are acting on A, we have BY and the minus 100 pounds force. Remember that BX, AX, and AY do not count because all of these forces pass through point A. Their lines of action pass through point A. So we have minus 100 pounds times 6 inches and BY times 10 inches. And I just referenced the original diagram to get the distances. So if we solve this, we get that by is equal to 60 pounds, and if we go back to one of the equations we found at the beginning, we have ay plus by is equal to 100 pounds, and ay plus 60 pounds equals 100 pounds, and then we get ay is equal to 40 pounds. So now that we've taken a moment about a, let's go back to the original structure, and if you notice, there's not really anything else we can do. If we took a moment about b, we still wouldn't get any more unknowns that we can solve for. So Let's just go to step three because there's nothing else we can do with the entire structure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to isolate member AC. So in the FBD for AC, we still obviously have the reaction force of A in the Y and X direction. But in frame problems, all the joints are connected by pins. So now we also have reaction force CY and CX. And we can take CY, CX, AY, AX, and take them out of their component forms and we can notice that there that member AC only has two forces acting upon it at each end of the member the forces are collinear so this means that member AC is a two force member now we're going to analyze AC the same way we analyze the entire structure we're going to do sum of forces in x so we have ax plus cx and then we get ax is equal to negative cx we're going to do sum of forces in y we have ay plus cy so we have ay equals negative cy now if we substitute stuff that we know we already found ay in the previous step so we get that cy is equal to negative 40 pounds now we're going to take a moment at c so we can solve for ax which we were unable to do when we were analyzing the entire structure so if we go ahead and plug in everything that we know into the moment equation we have AX times 5 inches, and we also have 40 pounds times 10 inches. The 40 pounds is the CY, which we found in the earlier step. So if we solve for this, we get AX is equal to 40 pounds. One of the equations that we found earlier is that AX is equal to negative CX. So if we go ahead and we plug in AX, we get that CX is equal to negative 40 pounds. So going back to the original question, part A asks us, to find all the reactions at A and B, and we actually found the reactions that are at C as well. And if we want to do part B, it's, we would take the exact same steps, except we would take the 100 pounds force, move it to point F, do the exact same thing, except now member BE would be our two force member. And I'll leave the answers for part B in the description if you'd like to try it yourself. So here are some tips you can use for any frame problem that you do. 
Always start with the FBD and use the same steps shown in this video. So firstly, analyze the frame as a whole. And once you can't find any more unknowns through analyzing the frame as a whole, then disassemble the frame. And two force members do really make everything easier. There's a reason why your prof keeps talking about them. When you're isolating different members, if you can identify which member is a two force member, you should always isolate that one because it's going to have the least amount of unknowns and it makes everything easier. Honestly, if you can solve one frame problem, you can solve all of them. They all have the same steps. Good luck on your quiz, your test, your midterm, or your final. You can do it. Practice makes perfect and just solve as many problems as you can. Good luck. And if this video helped you, please like and subscribe and leave a comment on what kind of future videos you'd like to see from me next. Thanks and I'll see you later.